How often are you seeing leaking cylinder head gaskets in your shop? There may be more than you realize. According to some sources, 5 to 10% of all vehicles on the road today are suffering from some type of cylinder head gasket leakage. Learning how to identify the obvious and the not so obvious is the topic of today's edition of The Trainer. The combustion process can generate upwards of 700 PSI in a gasoline engine and 2,000 PSI in a diesel. The cylinder head gasket's job is to keep that pressure contained in the combustion chamber. It's also charged with keeping the gases and liquids from passing on to adjacent cylinders or escaping into the coolant or lubricating oil passageways. Gasket failure can allow coolant to enter the combustion chamber or oil supply, or allow combustion gases into the cooling system. It can also cause oil to enter the cooling system, or coolant to enter the engine's lubrication system. None of these scenarios are good for the engine or the customer. Head gasket failures are accompanied by a variety of symptoms. Overheating can be both a sign of a failed head gasket or the cause of one. Depending on the severity of the failure, you may even see bubbles in the overflow tank as combustion pressure finds its way into the cooling system. An unexplained and continuous loss of coolant with no visual signs of the cause of the loss is also a potential indicator. Another indicator of head gasket failure is the presence of cylinder misfire, especially one that occurs on initial startup. Discolored fluids can also be signs of a failed head gasket. Coolant contaminated oil, for example, takes on a frothy consistency that always reminds me of chocolate milk. Oil contaminated coolant, on the other hand, forms a mayonnaise-like film which you might find on the radiator cap or in the overflow reservoir. And according to many industry sources, cylinder head gasket leaks are more common than we might think. The smaller leaks, though, will not present the same symptoms that we're used to and are much harder to detect. In fact, they may not even impact the overall drivability of the vehicle in any way. But if left alone, they can lead to premature damage of the engine's bearing surfaces, cylinder walls, and even accelerate the wear of the cooling system and its components. Think of a leaking head gasket like a cancer in the engine. Detecting it early, before it can do too much harm, is much better than waiting for the problem to manifest itself and cause damage to your customer's engine. And one quick way you can get an idea if there's a cylinder head gasket issue, is to check the acidity of the coolant, measuring its pH. Coolant manufacturers use a variety of inhibitors to protect the cooling system components and the coolant itself. If these additives are depleted prematurely, the coolant will become acidic and lose its ability to protect the system. In fact, the acidic makeup can actually result in damage to the system. And cylinder head gasket leakage is a common cause for the rapid depletion of these additives. And it's easy to test for, too, using a coolant test strip like this one. Now, if you suspect that there's a leaking head gasket, whether it's because the pH test failed or you've observed another symptom, how do you test and verify that it is indeed leaking? Well, there are a number of tests you can perform for that. Most rely on access through the cooling system, a window inside, if you will. You see, in the majority of cases, when a cylinder head gasket fails, it allows combustion pressure and gases to enter the cooling system passageways. One of the first tests I'm sure you learned was the use of a block tester. This test uses a chemical that reacts with exhaust gases 
providing visual proof that combustion leaks are present in the coolant passages. Unfortunately, this is not always accurate and may miss a fault where one exists. Another common tool for looking for combustion chamber leaks is the cooling system pressure tester. First, of course, we'll put pressure on the system and see if it can be maintained. If that test passes, we may bleed the pressure off, start the engine, and see if pressure begins to increase, which could indicate that there are combustion gases getting into the cooling system. But that alone is not a fail-safe and won't catch a lot of the smaller leaks you might encounter. I've had cases in the past where the cylinder head gasket only leaked after the engine got hot. And because it was running at the time, the leakage was so small, there really wasn't any noticeable impact on drivability. But when the engine was shut off and until the engine cooled, that pressurized system allowed coolant to leak into those combustion chambers just enough so that on the next startup, there would be enough contaminant there to cause a cylinder misfire. If you are going to use this method, make sure that you check it cold and at normal operating temperature and allow a good 5 or 10 minutes to see if pressure will bleed down. You may even want to remove the spark plugs after it's had a chance to hot soak and look for visual evidence of coolant on the piston tops. A bore scope is a great help here. Now, if there's also a specific cylinder misfire DTC recorded, you can even take some pressurized air and apply it to the cylinder specified by the DTC and the two adjacent cylinders and look for air that might bubble up either in the reservoir or in the radiator fill neck. Here's a great way to look for the presence of combustion chamber gases in the cooling system. Remove the radiator reservoir cap and then cover the opening with a shop rag. If you have to access the cooling system through the radiator itself, use a coolant fill funnel in place of the radiator cap and cover it with a shop rag. Allow the engine to get to normal operating temperature and run for several minutes and then using your five gas analyzer or a specialized CO2 leak detector like this one, Remove the cap and check for the presence of gas. Now here's another way that you can look for the presence of combustion chamber leakage using a pressure sensor and your scope. Using a digital storage oscilloscope or lab scope mated with a pressure sensor allows you to actually monitor the radiator for the presence of pressure changes, the kind that will occur as the leaking cylinder completes its compression stroke. Depending on the severity of the leak, you may not even have to start the engine. Simply crank it over for a minute or so. Be sure to use a second channel on your scope as a reference so you can identify the cylinder associated with the pressure change. And as with more traditional pressure tests, you may want to perform this test on the engine both cold and at its normal operating temperature. Now the last two methods will help you identify a small leak much more accurately than some of the more conventional methods you may be used to and help you identify that cancer of a leaking head gasket hopefully before it has any time to do any more extensive damage to your customer's engine. That's going to do it for this edition of The Trainer. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next month.